G'day, Professor Joseph Drew. Every year I have to sit down, download all the financial statements for all the local governments in the country and pick out data and put it in my database and combine it with data from the ABS and grants commissions and all sorts of other sources. And this is what I use for my papers and, and uh, consulting when we do it and the like. It's a huge task, takes a month or so, but it also concerns me sometimes when I'm looking at the data and seeing trends that are alarming. And in this video, I'll go through some very serious trends that I've seen. Please take note of the red down the bottom of this slide, target 500. If I haven't got up to 500 subscribers by the end of the year, I'm basically going to stop doing these videos. Um, I've got to justify my resources. If people aren't finding it helpful, that's fine. We don't do them. If you are finding it helpful, please let me know. Do things like subscribing, give, giving me a like, sending it to a mate that you know could use it. We've got 528 councils in this country. It shouldn't be difficult to get to 500 subscribers. So thank you for your help on that. So general comments. Our financial sustainability has declined alarmingly. Expenses have gone up alarmingly, as you will see in the following slides, much, much more than the rate cap that was approved by IPART. Another general comment, the Audit Office, who's now doing central audit on new, all New South Wales local governments, I think they need to lift their game. They lifted their audit fees considerably since the Audit Office has taken over, but the delays in getting financial statements audited and out on public display are really undermining our democracy. Citizens, it's now February and I've got 17 councils I can't get financial statements for. Citizens can't get data on their council. We're almost finished this financial year and they can't get the data from last financial year. I really need to get the message across to the audit office and you guys do too. It's got to be faster. It's just got to be faster. And the quality of the financial reports has declined alarmingly. I've noticed in the last couple of years, figures not adding up. Notes where there's just missing data. Uh, you see it a lot on the internal restrictions uh, where the data's just missing. Um, please, if you're at the audit office and you're listening to this, I'm not criticizing you, but we need accurate data. If we don't have accurate data, we can't see where the problems are and communities can't understand what their local government situation is. So we just need to do much better, thank you. So this is New South Wales data, but it will apply probably the same to every state. I, I will be very surprised if I find different trends in different states, but let's go through the New South Wales state. So this is a year on year change from one financial year to last financial year, which ended June 2023, in staff expenditure. Now, I've given you three measures here. I've given you the mean, the standard deviation, and the median. Now, you all know what the mean is. That's the average, like a cricketer's average. The standard deviation is the average distance of individual councils to the mean. It gives us an idea of how much we can rely on that mean. And the median is if you put all the numbers in ascending order and picked out the middle number, that's the median. Now, usually in most cases, statisticians will tell you that the median is most reliable because it's resistant to skewing. What is skewing is when you have a very small number or a very big number, it can distort the whole picture of the mean. Although when you have the standard deviation, it allows you to better adjust for that. So let's have a look at the staff costs. Whole state, they've gone up 6.03%. Now, bear in mind the IPART rate cap increase for rates for New South Wales was 3.7 to 6.8%, I believe. Uh, so the staff cost, which is around a third of expenditure for most councils, has gone up in many cases by more than the rate cap. The median there was six and almost 6.5%. Now it's very different for urban councils and rural councils. You can see that right through the next two slides as well. They're completely different organisations. They do different things like water and sewer. They have dirt roads in the country where I live and bitumen roads in the city. They have lots more discretionary stuff in the city, you know, super duper playgrounds and opera houses and all sorts of convention centres and all sorts of things where the little rural councils tend not to be able to afford those discretionary services. So that really changes their expenditure profile. 
So urban councils, on average, staff costs went up six and a quarter percent. The median, the typical result, looking at the middle finger, if we put them in ascending orders, very concerning at 8.66%. Rural councils went up on average 5.74%. The median is 5.24%. So rural councils came close to keeping staff costs in line with those wage increases. Some of our urban councils, particularly when you look at the size of that standard deviation, have increased their staff costs quite a lot and if they haven't increased their revenue quite a lot and their permanent changes well obviously there's going to be problems down the track now this data is important for a lot of reasons it gives you a feel for how you're going to compare to other councils now no one wants to be average everyone wants to be the best obviously but if you're wondering why your costs are going up in an area and you're thinking oh something's wrong well have a look at what the sector's doing Obviously, the sector-wide triggers causing these problems that councils are responding to, and we're seeing it in the audited financial data. Remember, also, I'm also missing 17 councils because the delays mostly in the auditing process. So this material section is the one that concerns me the most. Now, what concerns me is in the rate capping, we use CPI as one of the main inputs, the consumer price index. And that's the changing cost of things that people buy in a household basket of goods. But the things that local government buy tend to be very different. Steel and bitumen, very energy intensive, big plant equipment. And if you watch financial news or any news, you'd be aware that those things have gone up dramatically. The, the price of steel has gone up dramatically. If you're a farmer, if you've done any fencing, you know that well and truly, I certainly do. So um, this materials cost, it's not surprising it's very large. It's also not surprising there's very big standard deviations. Now this is non-capitalised materials. So if we've built something new and we've capitalised, it won't be reflected here, but it's still giving us a really good idea of one of the biggest cost triggers for local government. So whole of state, on average, it's gone up 23.5%. That's considerably more than your rate cap. Uh, big standard deviation, as I said, there's always going to be that because different councils have different programs of purchasing and using materials that aren't capitalized. The median, 17.25%. Urban councils have kept things under control better on the whole, but it still pales uh, it's still considerably larger than the rate cap, 15.08%, the median almost 13%. Rural councils, this is extremely concerning, and I don't think there's enough recognition given to the fact that rural councils do different stuff, so they're buying different stuff, water and sewer stuff, and they also have different cost pressures. Using state indexes like we do doesn't make sense. If you've ever, ever lived in a rural area, in a city area, you know that prices may not be going up much in Sydney, but they're like going up massively in rural areas because of things like transport costs. You know, remember one of the big drivers to inflation was fuel? Guess how stuff gets out to me at Moonbee? Buy a truck with fuel. So my costs have been rising a lot faster than Sydney costs, and I don't think that's been recognised properly always. So rural material costs up by over 35 percent incredible the median 28 percent really really surprising have a look at those red words down the bottom i got heaps of data i've got a database that goes back to 20 2009 2010 something like that we can do more of these videos but you've got to play ball you've got to let me know that you like them and you want them there's no point me doing them if they're no use you've also got to get some subscriptions, subscribe yourself if you haven't, please, and send it around to someone else. Recruit someone else for me. I just want to get this message out. I want councils to know that they're not alone. That if they've got this huge problem and challenge, it looks like everyone else does. And then I want us to talk as a sector about what we can do with this challenge, how we're gonna confront it and mitigate it. So I want what you want, help me to help others. Depreciation, now that should be reflective of the consumption of a long life asset over time. In New South Wales, we've had a lot of changes. I've done some papers on it, some videos on my channel about it. 
Uh, since we went to central auditing, there's been large increases and large changes to depreciation. And I get the feeling, looking at the figures year after year, that the central auditors going through different types of councils and slowly catching them up. So that's why it's very uneven what's happening here. So across the state, depreciation's gone up by 7.76% on average. The median's 8.14. Once again, absolutely dwarfs the rate peg. There is a screenshot down the bottom of what the rate peg is from the higher part side. Urban. Depreciation has gone up 6% on average, median 7.19%. Rural, I suspect the central auditor was focusing a lot more on rural councils this year or assets that rural councils have. Um, on average, up just over 10%, the median 9.9%. When you notice the median, the mean's the same. That gives you a good feeling about relying on that mean. It means the data can't be too skewed. But bear in mind those standard deviations, as I said previously. Now, overall, obviously, I think you can all see a problem. Costs have gone up way far higher and faster than what rates have gone up. I don't know what you've done with your fees. I can get uh, some summary data and do a video on that shortly. FAGs obviously didn't keep up with 10 and 30% increases and things like that. So it's obviously extremely alarming for financial sustainability. And I, one of the things I noticed when I was putting the data through is the number of councils that have completely, completely drained their internal reserves and, and or have negative cash and unrestricted cash. It doesn't get much more alarming. You know, I was only talking to my good friend, Emeritus Professor Dollery, the other day, and we said, look, the crisis we've been warning about for years, and everyone said, oh, no, 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 no problems, you're overreacting here. Well, when are we all going to realise that this crisis is turning up now? And we need proper, robust, empirical expert guidance and to fix this. What we don't need is another half-baked inquiry that gives us recommendations and i'm not suggesting anything about the current inquiry but we don't want 2016 all over again supported by guess and giggle commercial consultant work and experts that clearly didn't have the requisite expertise and never looked at nor cited any of the empirical evidence we just can't afford a massive mistake again like that so look help me out i'm just trying to get data there trying to get people talking about these things we don't wake up to this, the problem's not going away. We're gonna to have to deal with it. And the sooner as we start dealing with it, the better the outcomes are gonna be for us and our communities. Look, thank you very much for your time. Remember the target 500. Remember these trends are happening in the other states too. I'm dealing with New South Wales data first because that's where I live. That's what I understand best. Um, but the chances are if you're in another state, it applies equally to you. So. Help me out guys, get the message out there and let's start working on this financial sustainability. It has got to crisis point and a lot of councils now, if we don't do something soon, we're gonna have significant ramifications on our communities and our local governments and the services that people rely on every day. Thank you very much for your time, goodbye.